we're trying to split this into three steps, very easy infrastructure, shared services and applications. That's usually how we talk to customers and clients when we work with their teams and how to structure their DevOps engineering. So this is a, a um, something that Roland was showing that we're using Argo as a two-way deployment. So now that Noel have dealt with deploying a cluster, now it's time to deploy the things inside the cluster. And the first thing from that will be shared services and then applications. The, the, what we're using is OpenShift GitOps. Somebody was asking about other clouds. So the same process applies to OpenShift anywhere. It could be VMware, AWS, Azure, IBM Cloud. The, the idea is that customers have clusters and many clusters everywhere. But that same cluster, it could be either multi-tenant in namespaces or divided in cluster will be deployed the same way from a single Git repo or a set of Git repositories. And the same treatment that they give today to their applications, business applications, like their Westview applications, Spring Boot application, Python applications, they will give that same treatment to the Cloudpack uh, middleware and the Cloudpack operators. Talking about multi-cluster, um, let's show a little bit of what we have done with this framework and the assets when you start working with them. We have different options and typically when you are a, a tech seller or, or uh, someone that's trying to do a demo, you start with a single cluster to try things out to see how quickly can you set up a, an environment with all the, the stages, CICD, dev, staging and production. And this cluster, you will point it to a Git organization. So the, the hands-on assets that we're going to give you will create those Git repos for you automatically to get you bootstrap it. But we also work with other, you maybe you are a CSM or maybe you are a person like actually doing this for a client or requesting an environment from Texan to do it with the client. And you start with that shared cluster and then you want to have a second cluster in a production, a different region, for example, West Coast and East Coast. And you don't want to go to the same process again to configure the same thing for that second cluster, but you don't want to deploy everything. You want to deploy only the production pieces and, and not the, the other pieces like staging and dev. But the idea is that you will point it to the same Git repos. And the same thing we have for the other options and to the point that we have large customers that have mo a lot of clusters and they have clusters per accounts, cluster per teams, and they want to segregate or federate the different cluster for different things. But again, using the same pattern, you can control what gets deployed to each cluster by the cluster subscribing to a Git repository and deciding which applications go into which cluster. And the idea is that to have some type of consistency on deploying the application. So for example, if you have a clapback for AppConnect, a, a certain version, you want that same version in staging and production and the different production environments. Or maybe you want a different version in dev than the one in staging. That you can control easily from, from Git and that's what we're trying to get to. So the idea is have full automation that no one goes manually or with a GUI or the CLI and configure the cluster that you do it in Git and then the controller would reconcile that. Um, so this, you will see folders and in the Git repos and the documentation showing you what type of, what we call it like cluster profile, for example, that you're dealing with. And sometimes you add on top of this something like Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management or Red Hat Satellite to manage multiple clusters. And the idea is to tell each cluster what are the applications that you want to deploy to it, and they will pull the configuration. The next one is around Git. So we are talking about GitOps. We're talking about these shared services. So how do we deploy these things? Let me go in. So we have a couple of Git repos that you'll be working on. So this is a hands-on session. One is infra. We call it infra infrastructure. So there will be like people like Buri and Noel will be in charge of managing this Git repo, uh, Git repository. And usually it's this one, we want to have it as a library. You will not be changing things here. Basically you will change in the version or what things you want to pick from here using Argo CD or OpenShift GitOps. But these are things are global to the cluster, like cluster roles, namespaces, console links, global pull secrets, things that maybe the shared services use, but they don't have to manage. Maybe things that 
they, the apps team actually need namespaces, right? So our, a lot of our clients use things like ServiceNow and opening Jira tickets uh, to get those things uh, up and running. So the team in charge of configuring the cluster can go ahead and use GitOps to set up the cluster with the right policies. For example, the network policies, things like Kiverno, Gatekeeper, for anything that is global to the cluster, even storage or machine sets. These are things that are declarative of code, infrastructure of code. So the client can, that team can be in charge of that Git repository, and maybe only them have access to pull requests and change requests, opening issues and managing those, those files that are used by all the clusters in the organization. Then the next layer is, let me zoom in a little bit, people were saying about Zoom, is shared services. So you will have a different Git repo to put things like the operator. So if you're familiar with OpenShift, we have OpenShift Hub, we have OpenShift Marketplace, that operators is a way of deploying that software that will be reused by the apps team. So things like service mesh, serverless, that are plugins or add-ons that come with OpenShift, but things like uh, IBM Cloud Pack. So we get to the IBM Cloud Packs, uh, Cloud Pack for business automation, Cloud Pack for data, Cloud Pack for integration. The operators, you will put them here. In certain situations, one instance is used by many, many teams. So if it's a shared service, the definition of that instance of platform navigator, for example, or IBM common services will be declared here. And this is a reusable Git repo that everybody in the organization can use. And you can set the version outside this Git repo and share it. Things like Kafka, Seal Secrets and Cert Manager, all those things will live here. And sometimes we talk to a team that is in charge of maintaining those middleware or maintaining those shared services for the organization and not necessarily in the apps team or maybe the engagement team or, or marketing doing the business logic. And we move to the last one, which is we call apps. So we go infrastructure, shared services and apps. And this is the layer where we're using a convention by OpenShift called the OpenShift Advanced GitOps Management, KAM, and they have an utility and there's a new version went out with OpenShift GitOps Operator WinGA. And, but this is different ways of, of putting these folders together. But the idea is that the apps team will be in charge of configuring their pipeline or in combination with the shared team, or maybe this is a DevOps team, they have pipelines here or how, want to, how do they want to build their assets or workloads, for example. I want to say workloads because this could be a Java application, it could be a Westview application, it could be an ACE integration server, it could be an MQ manager. So it could be also a cloud pack. So the same treatment that we give for CICD to apps, typical microservices will give them to the cloud pack middleware to, to promote it. And then we use things like overlays and customize. So the Delta, we use 12 factors. So the Delta between dev, stage and prod is, is a minimal patch or a minimal, minimal delta. For example, in dev, you can have like one replica of, of something and it has a certain version. And once it goes through a pipeline that we're going to show and it passes maybe functional tests, it gets deployed to staging. And staging, maybe you have the same environment as production, more replicas and, and such. And then you run some, some performance testing or load testing and staging and you promote that version of that Cloud pack for integration or cloud pack or, or, or the apps. In our case, we're talking about cloud pack. So we'd be talking about an ACE integration, MQ manager, until the point that you put it in production. In production, maybe the delta is only the license. So if you're familiar with cloud packs, sometimes some assets need a license string that says, this is the amount of software that I'm using in production. So for stage and dev, Please don't count them. The production license goes in here, and that's what you put in here. So you will see that in the in the examples. And how do we put this together? And how do we deploy it? We deploy this using Argo CD. Argo CD is the open source technology behind OpenShift GitOps. And uh, the way it is, you put these files in Git, and then you connect them to the cluster. So a bootstrap is the way to get started with the layers. So we show the layers here. And we have our typical layers, infrastructure, services, and apps. So for, for infrastructure, you will have things like Argo apps. So we use the pattern of Argo apps or Argo apps. And the idea is that there will be a Argo app that you can easily see when somebody submits a pull request or a change request, where you see like somebody changed one line. It could be like a version number 
or a configuration setting for a for a cluster row, or maybe a namespace, or maybe they wanted to add more machines with machine sets or console links, and that will be the files that live in this GitHub repo. We call it the the main the main GitHub repo. And, and the idea that you can put all these things together in one repo, one monolith repo, that works. You can split them even more, but this is kind of the sweet spot of getting started of things when we talk to clients, because we're talking different teams. So the team that is concerned with the infrastructure will be concerned maybe with this folder, and you will see a folder with that information. The next team is shared services, so the same aspect. You have apps of apps, and this will point to the things that you want to deploy. So in the Argo app, you will put the version of Cloud Pack for integration, or ACE or MQ. You will say that you want the operator installed, that you want an operator instance representing platform navigator and which version it is and so on. So the, the version and the specifics, you put them here and you use those two first Git repositories as, as libraries, for example. And the last one is more a of a, of a way of delegating uh, to those things. So these Argo apps will point to the, the Argo app sitting in the in the apps teams because there'll be many, many teams and how they go come together on how many apps each one have if they want, want to have one app. And and all these three repos do not contain source code, do not contain Java, do not contain Python. Basically it it has the GitOps assets. And for last we have projects, Argo projects. So Argo project is a way of governance saying that these Argo apps are only allowed to deploy to a certain namespace. These Argo apps are only allowed to deploy from this Git repository. So you have a little bit of, of governance control of who's allowed to view these Argo apps when they log in into OpenShift, who's allowed to sync them, who's allowed them to delete them. So we use Argo projects as a way of, of governance. And this is, again, this is the open source technology but this is GA and supported by OpenShift GitHub, which is an add-on that you get with OpenShift. So with that said, I talk a lot about CICD pipelines. So this is where, let's say that our, we already finished with the shared services, the clusters are deployed with the cloud packs, and now we need to get workloads in there. And then when I say the cloud packs are installed, it's just the operator. We haven't instantiated a, a middleware for example, a ACE integration server or an MQ manager. So in that case, we have another Git repo that will put those files in there. For example, we have ACE flows that people use the ACE toolkit. We have MQ manager configuration and you have your typical Java code and Docker. And we'll use Tekton, which is the open source technology, but in OpenShift it's GA. It's called the OpenShift pipelines operator. And we're going to do pipelines. So we, there will be a pipeline that gets triggered when something changes in those source code repos. And this pattern is using Tekton and Argo. It's a pattern that we use from the Cloud Native Toolkit. And the Cloud Native Toolkit, if you have gone to other sessions that we have done, is a open source project that we put assets, guides in there to do DevOps and reference implementations for OpenShift and IBM middleware and the Cloud Packs. So we do the, the pipelines. The thing that we, we try to stress is to not deploy directly to the OpenShift cluster or to the namespace directly from the pipelines. And instead, every pipeline will have at the end a GitOps task that you see here that will push a change, a direct change. Uh, we have an example of direct change, or it can submit a PR, a pull request, a change request that maybe has integration with ServiceNow or a Jira ticket system. We see that a lot with clients that then send, then a human being right needs to approve it and then merge it or be automation testing that happens. So the, the first promotion that we build the doc, we can build images, we can build artifacts, we can scan them, we do scan the image, we do scanning of the manifest files, the Docker file, the YAML files, and then we push that to, to Git, and then that will trigger Argo to deploy the workload. It could be the MQ manager or the ACE integration server or, or the WestVR application to the dev environment. When that's done, the same treatment happens again. Argo would trigger another pipeline to test the, this application in dev. So we're doing promotions. So one of the things that we do is end-to-end -end testing, functional testing, testing with the HTTP server, like using Newman, related to Postman, and the same treatment. If it passes, then it goes to GitOps. It pushes to uh, the folder in GitOps for the apps repo called Stage. 
and that will trigger Argo again to deploy to stage. And then in staging, then you can do some non-functional tests like performance testing, load testing, when it's running in staging, and to the point that the app pushes back to GitOps repo prod, that could be a, a product, a pull request that somebody merges on the day that do releases. So maybe they want to wait until, until Monday, right? To do the release and merge the PR. But that once that happens, it goes into production and there could be, this could be customization, but we have out of the box, we have an example that you can actually try yourself and, and get these up and running so you can learn the, the, the methodology and also show the value of the cloud native DevOps to, to the clients. And it goes to production where we're going to show how Instana is managing, monitoring the production workload, the cloud packs, and also the OpenShift assets and also the apps assets. So last one, it could be a, an optional pipeline that you can do a smoke test and maybe notify that the, the new version is available, notify the team or notify the client. So this is an, an extra thing that, that we do. And with that, let me show you a quick demo on how that looks like. So this is the, the Git repo that you'll be working on. So when you request an environment, you will get a Git organization populated with Git repos. This is the first Git, Git repository that I was talking about. And you will see that we have options for the multi-clusters, multi-cluster profiles, and you can, you can see those. But for now, um, we're asking everyone to try the single cluster. That's the easiest one. This is the infrastructure layer that Noah showed, and he deployed the cluster and he enabled the namespaces. I'm going to show services. So we use in customize. So the idea to do is, is make it super easy that you will select which operator and operator instances you want to deploy to this cluster that we already set up with Argo and, and everything. So I'm, I'm uncommenting MQ platform navigator, common services or foundation services that are called now, IBM catalogs if I'm doing non ergap And then for this example, an example, we have open LDAP assert manager to show security, how, con how to make security between them. And then seal secrets, we're using seal secrets as a way to manage secrets in Git. So this is the typical way that people will manage changes to the cluster. They will see a, a, a Delta, in this case, I have a rocks cluster, OpenShift cluster deployed. This is that the way that you're going to get it when you run through the guy and request an environment and it will have OpenShift GitOps already installed. You can see that the infrastructure layer already here, services is empty. So what I'm going to show now is the demo of when I push this change to Git, then Argo will be get triggered or you can refresh it. You can refresh and it will start deploying MQ. So I'm setting up MQ. I'm going to speed this up because it takes a, a while. It takes a, a few minutes, but the idea is that Argo starts deploying the operators in order, but it start, you can see now in the left side, my left side, the OpenShift operator starting to show up and installing. So things like cert manager, common services, IBM MQ, all of them will start deploying that cluster. So if you get another cluster, you can point it to the same Git repo and the same configuration, the same operators will get installed and configured the same way. So you can see Argo already has everything deployed. All the operators are already deployed and I can check that MQ, IBM MQ is ready to use it and start doing pipelines and deploying MQ managers on it. 